Welcome to the Halloween episode of Triple T. Today we are going to make some healthy and wickedly delicious treats. Let us begin. <laughs> there goes the cat. That was creepy. <laughs> I hope I didn't damage my cat. Poor Emmy Lou. She was great. So, okay. So today um, we're going to make some yummy things. And I want to just mention something though. You know, if you're watching this show, you already know, um, or you should know, that you're coming with me. You're coming with me on this, this long journey uh, from the very early stages of getting ready for bariatric surgery uh, to through the bariatric surgery and after and for the rest of my life, basically. You're stuck with me. So I want to mention to you that obviously I've been making some yummy things, right? And that's going to change. Eventually, I'm not going to be eating those for quite a while. But I've been making yummy things to show you really kind of how you need to be eating or how I need to be eating ahead of time. And I'm going to be kind of winding down on all of those foods. And then I'm not going to be able to eat stuff like that for long after I have the surgery. So, um, of course, because Halloween is coming, I thought it was very fitting to sort of do a little bit of a last hurrah to some treats, some sweet stuff. Um, I have a sweet tooth. Actually, I have several sweet teeth. <laughs> so one thing that's really important is to remember that it's okay to allow yourself a treat every once in a while. It's actually really important because you need to have something every once in a while, um, nothing that's too crazy off, off the program kind of thing, and so that you can enjoy um, the realities of life and sugar and all of those sweet treats. And I definitely love sweet treats. Um, so let's make something really delicious. You ready? Oh, well, here it is. So, so basic, so easy. We are going to make really delicious baked caramel apples and then also some very light and very delicious caramel corn. It's like the bomb and you're going to love it. Okay, so my first secret weapon is Mrs. Richardson's caramel or caramel, however you like to say it. Um, she actually normally has, there's a butterscotch caramel, but this is her sea salt caramel. Now, I'm actually normally not a huge fan of sea salt caramel things because I find the sea salt to be too much. There's too, it's just too salty for me. This actually happens to be just not only the right amount of salt, it's just a little hint of it, but it's also really great for this recipe because you want a little salt when you bake sweet things to bring out the sweet and you actually then don't need as much. Genius, right? So that's the first secret weapon. And then my other secret weapon, which isn't really a secret, unless you uh, don't shop at Trader Joe's, but this is their, their apple cider, their spiced apple cider. And we love this in this house. Um, we like to heat it up in the winter, but it's also extremely good for baking apples because it imparts the spicedness in there. And it's basically like boom, boom, three ingredients and you're done. Okay, so first let's get the apples cut up and get this thing going, okay? Move this here. Let's get my board. Ta-da! And I have a really awesome pan for this. It's perfect. My Le Creuset pan. And I'm going to take four apples. These have been washed, of course. And, you know, normally when you make baked apples, you put the whole thing in. You core them. You use one of these little doohickeys and you core them down in, right? They actually bake much better, and I have another secret way of doing this that's better, um, is to cut them in half, okay? I'm gonna cut them in half. Okay, also, I wanna point out, notice I'm using Granny Smith apples, and that is because, first of all, I like tart, and tart and sweet combined is like delish, and um, it's they're not as sweet. And again, you are watching our sugar intake, and you're gonna be putting a little caramel drizzle on there. So I like to use the more tart apples. Now, take a melon baller. First of all, we wanna take these little stems off, the big side of the melon baller, okay? And the Granny Smith are a little harder to work with, but you'll get it. And just take all of these cores out. Perfect. Yes. Okay, so we're done pouring. Need my little paring knife just because some of these the core doesn't really quite work. And again, the Granny Smith are a little harder to work with. So I do a little, just a little cleanup on aisle three here. Okay, so I have them all ready. Get a couple more seeds off of here. So see, I just had to cut out some of the, the bottoms there. 
So now we're going to put the apple cider in the pan. Again, you know me and my eyeballing, but basically about, didn't shake it, hold on. The spices are at the bottom. You wanna put about, oh, like half an inch, three quarters of an inch. Okay, it will evaporate a little bit in the oven. That's about right there. And now let's put our apples in the pan, but ready for this? We're gonna put them in upside down so that their faces are in the juice. Okay, so see how they're all going in? It's almost like bobbing, ooh, bobbing for apples. So basically what's gonna happen is they're basically gonna marinate in that spiced apple cider while they're baking, right? And we're gonna put the caramel on at the very end, about five to 10 minutes before they're done. Okay, so now let's put them in the oven. I gotta get the oven open first. See, I have it on the middle. See, it's on the middle there. And let's pop these babies in. You need two hands to put them in there. It's wobbly and wobbly and it could spill. Okay, so we're gonna leave them in there for 40 minutes. By the way, I preheated that oven to 375 and the last five to 10 minutes, that's when the best part happens. But while those are in the oven baking, let's get our caramel corn ready. Okay, so I love Skinny Pop. I love it in the pre-popped bags, but it's especially good, the microwave version. If you've never had it, it's like really good. And I like the sea salt one. It's not overly salty at all. And there's a tiny bit of, um, of olive oil, or well, let's see, what is it? It's sunflower oil and palm oil, not the best oils, I'm not gonna lie but there's not a lot of those oils at all. You could use air popped popcorn. I highly recommend using a pre-popped or something with a little bit of a flavor to it, just because otherwise it has no personality at all and it's just kind of bland. Right. So we're gonna now a little tip, uh, you probably already know this or maybe you don't, but when you pop microwave popcorn, my microwave happens to have the perfect popcorn button, but you always have to be careful because there's nothing worse than burnt microwave popcorn, but mine has the perfect setting. It's done, didn't burn it. So, little trick, they don't always all pop, right? Of course, not that this is a trick, this isn't rocket science. Just, I like to make sure that the kernels go down to the bottom that aren't popped. Look at that steam. Woo! Mmm! Now, so I just very gently, I kind of hold on to the bottom of the butt of the bag so that in case any of those kernels are still down there, they don't come flying out. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is prep our pan. We have foil. Voila, pan, pan. And we want to line the pan with foil because this is going to be sticky. I always, always take off too much foil. It's like a constant problem of mine, but you know what, that's okay. We'll just tuck it on the edge of the pan there. Very wasteful. Okay, so now the best part is the caramel. So again, the little secret weapon, the Mrs. Richardson sea salt. Again, it's not too salty. It's delightful. So we're going to, yes, I did just take a whiff of the caramel. We're going to put some in this cup because we're going to microwave it. Oh my God, look at that. So you want about a quarter cup of this, okay? And I really, really, really want to lick this spoon right now, but I won't. I promise. And we're going to microwave this just for about 20 seconds to get it warm and like more liquidy. Wait for my countdown. Wait for my countdown. So now, the spoon that I didn't lick comes back out. Give it a stir. See, it's much more fluid now, and it will apply to the popcorn much easier. Still want to lick the spoon. Okay, so now, there's a little trick here. You're going to take your spoon and basically start drizzling and moving it so that it doesn't just all glop in one place. Okay, 
drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. Try to get as much surface area as possible because otherwise, because you got to move fast. Yeah, this stuff, this stuff is stickery. Okay, so see, you're just going to keep, keep it moving. It was good that the popcorn was kind of warm. And see how it's not fully coated in this pot, in this caramel? It's just light. It's light, light, light. So now we're going to pour it onto the pan. Okay. This is going to be a fabulous batch because I'm also, I have another little twist in just a minute. And you got to have some patience with this. It's going to be sticky. It's like, you know, when you make Rice Krispie treats and you want to basically pull your hair out because you realize, why did I do this? It's sticky. But this is worth it. So hang in there. And just smush it out. Actually, even better. Take this. That's why I had this weight. That's better because it's got the, the right material, one of these rubbery things. Smash it down. Nice, even layer. So it's ready, but we're going to add a little thing. You know, I think you might have heard of it, chocolate, because who doesn't love chocolate? And it actually makes a really nice addition to some of it, but I'm only gonna do half of the tray so that we have some with the chocolate and some without. Now these are my famous little semi-sweet uh, semi mini morsels that we like to use. And I have a little tea, actually it's an iced teaspoon just because it's nice and small. And I'm just gonna sprinkle some on half of this pan. Just a little. Remember, we're just getting a little bit of a treat. Yes, this is all full sugar, but you know what? We're not gonna be eating tons of this and it's one night. See? And now we're gonna let this sit here and wait for our apples to bake and then we'll slowly lower the oven to 200 and put this in. Okay, so 40 minutes is up. But now let's get the caramel sauce heated up, ready to drizzle. Put this in here for just about, again, 20 seconds. Now, you'll see I put it right in there in the jar. I did it before in the measuring cup just so you could see the quantity. This one I eyeball for sure because you just want to drizzle. You can put a little bit more on if you want. You can put a little bit less. But again, I just eyeball it. Okay, so while the caramel is heating up, Let's get the apples out, and I have a surprise for you. Okay, I have a heat-proof countertop here. Now something happened, wasn't sure if it would happen, but it did. These apples basically exploded a little bit, and that's actually good, I like that, because I like my apples really, really cooked, okay? So you'll notice here, see how they're basically exploded? But what we're gonna do, almost like applesauce, we're gonna flip them over, okay? So it's become like a big dish of spiced apple cider and apples, kind of in chunks. So now I've got the caramel sauce. I'm gonna use my, my pot holder. Left the oven open. Okay. Okay, so this is all, you're gonna mix it up. It's nice and loosey-goosey. And again, we're just gonna do some drizzles, okay? And you don't need a lot. This is so flavorful, this caramel. You just don't need a lot. Okay, so it's covered. And now I'm going to put it back in the oven for just about five minutes just to make sure that the caramel melds with the flavor. Okay, it's time. It's time for goodness, deliciousness. Okay, look. Now again, these turned into almost like caramel apple soup, but that's something that I actually like. There's big chunks in there, but depending on the type of apple you use, it would stay as, as a half an apple. And then again, you just flip them and do the same thing. So now let's get our popcorn in the oven. Okay, so now we're gonna leave those in the oven. The oven's at 200 now for 10 minutes, and then we're gonna pull that out, and we're gonna let everything cool so that we can eat it at a nice, normal temperature. Okay, so it smells like caramel, caramel, whatever, chocolate, popcorn, apple goodness in here. Let's get that popcorn.
Oh my God. So now you have to leave this for 10 minutes because it is so, so hot. Let it cool and then it's going to be heaven. Are you ready? Let's eat these things. So for the caramel apple, now again, this came out soupier. I love that. Actually, it's kind of like the way I love it more. So I'm going to take a little bit of that part. I'm going to take a part of an apple. Mm. Let's try it. Now remember, you could put like a little bit of whipped cream on here if you wanted to, but I like it just like it is. So good. And all that spiced apple cider, it's got all the spicing you need. I'm sure there's cinnamon in there, a little nutmeg, a little clove. It's not too much though. It's not overdone. You know how like some of those spice things taste like, like too much? So delicious. And this is like, I like it warm. Mm. Awesome. Okay, now let's get the popcorn. I have special containers for them. Look, I have cute little Halloween buckets if you're having friends over safely, socially distanced, right? And then I use these muffin papers a lot. I use them for little servers. They're kind of handy for a lot of stuff. So you can fill your little buckets. Now, this is a little tricky and sticky. Ha ha, I made a run. So look, can you hear that? Can you hear that? Can you hear that crunchiness? So it's got just the right amount of crunchy, not too much. So I like to just scoop it in here. I'm showing a lot of restraint right now, not putting some in my mouth, but trying to be civilized. Okay, so now let's put a little in here. Pretend we're at a party and I'm trying to take a portion. Okay, I took too much. Shocker. Or you could put them out like this if you have kids coming, whatever. So good. So good. Oh my God. It's so like, it's not that sweet. It's got a little bit, it still has so much crunch. You don't need a Snickers or an Almond Joy or whatever, Twix or whatever it is that you want to eat. This is perfect. Let's try the chocolate one. Again, oh my God, so good. Not too much chocolate, just a little bit, and it's giving you all the sweet that you need, and it's so less sugary than actual caramel corn that you buy in the store or just, you know, coated in it. You don't need a lot of it because that caramel is just delicious light. Okay, so what do you think? Good, right? So you can treat yourself, you can. You don't have to go crazy. Um, Halloween's tough for me. I love sugar and I mean, obviously I'm not going to go trick or treating, but it's hard to see all of that stuff in the stores. Fortunately, we're not going into stores as much these days, but you can make some healthy, delicious things and indulge a little bit. And this is probably going to be my last indulgence for a while because I'm having surgery probably in about a month. I'll announce when the date is once I know when that is, but it's probably the end of November. So I need to start winding down on this stuff, but for now I'm going to enjoy it. Happy Halloween, everyone. Thank you for watching and keep an eye out for my Dia Del Mertos episode. For those of you that sound familiar, my Baba Sue friend, um, keep an eye out for that and thanks for watching.